Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2001 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. It has an 8.1 liter gas engine in it and an Allison 1000 series automatic. We're going to be doing a transmission flush on it today. We'll be using the Amsoil synthetic low viscosity ATF. Meets and exceeds all the specifications for that Allison and runs 20 to 50 degrees cooler than petroleum based oils and will significantly extend the life of that transmission. First thing we're going to do with that transmission flush is we're going to drain the fluid and we're going to take the pan off and change that internal filter. We change that internal filter, we'll clean the magnet inside and we'll also clean all the dirt load out of that transmission pan. Uh, we do that to uh, prevent that from being an issue to the transmission. Uh, if any of that, that dirt gets into that valve body, if you do a flush without taking that pan off, you can stir up that, that junk in the tranny pan and what will happen is it will get out to your valve body and hang it up. And if that happens, you can lose application pressure in your clutches. When that happens, you'll burn up a clutch pack and your transmission's done at that point. So I try to get that dirt load out to prevent that from happening and then I do the flush. So we go to do that flush, we're going to do it through the transmission cooler line which is up on the radiator. And what I did, I purchased uh, these here to do that transmission flush. This would go in the radiator, this would go in the line that comes out of the radiator. I've got probably a $100 bill in these two pieces right here. You don't necessarily need to buy those. You can also use a 5 8 OD poly line because that fitting in that uh, uh, radiator is going to have an O-ring in it. When you take out your, your uh, line, which is what this is what the line will look like, that O-ring will seal on the snout of that uh, tubing, that 5 8 tubing. You can push it right in there and this can go out to your drain pan from your cooler and then the line itself, you can put a hose on it and take it to your cooler. So you got both areas covered, whichever way the fluid is flowing. I try to get it coming out of the cooler if I can, if it's easy to get at. So we'll show you that as we go through that. The other thing we're going to do is replace the external filter with a, a Wix spin-on filter. And another thing that's very handy uh, that Amsoil has, if you go to my website, fluidcapacity.com, you can go to... Uh, their lookup guide and type in the information for your vehicle and it will give you all the different fluids that it recommends for each cavity. The engine, the transmission, differentials, transfer case. Uh, it lists all the different fluids that Amsoil has for it and then it also has the filters as well like the engine oil filter, uh, the other filters we carry in Wix. Okay and then down further it has the capacities, the engine cooling system, the engine oil, the uh, transmission, differentials and transfer case. Very handy to have and you can print it off for each of your vehicles and put it in the glove box so you don't have the, uh, the trouble of trying to find it in your owner's manual. So we're going to get started with this transmission flush. Okay the transmission line that we need to get to up here in the radiator is right by the air box and we're going to take this air box out of the way so we can get at it and we're going to take it off all the way over here to the intake. hose coming from the transmission is cooler hose. It's a 5 8 on the snout here. If you use a 5 8 heater hose, it'll slip right over it. Go over a little bit and it'll catch good and it'll stay right there. That way if the fluid's coming up this here tube, it'll take you out to your drain pan. Now, this uh, jiffy tight fitting here, it's got a snap ring right there. It needs to be put back in. And there's three slots around the outside of this. One there, one there, and one up here. What you do is you bridge two of the slots, like so, and snap it back in. And then that fitting, when you're all done, it'll just push right in, and that snap ring will catch that lip, that ridge right there, where that hose is at. And that'll seal it back up. Now, this hose here that you're gonna put in on that jiffy type fitting, make sure that this edge is not sharp. If it's sharp, you can uh, take a chunk out of that O-ring. Just take a, like a file or something like that, and go around the edge of that hose and make sure that it's got a nice taper to it so that there's no sharp edges. You can feel it, okay? And then when you're done with that, you can go ahead and insert it. But that will prevent any kind of damage to that uh, O-ring fitting. We'll pop that on in. Right there it is. 
And then we can go ahead and put this uh, air filter system back on because we're going to have to have that uh, mass airflow sensor on for the engine to run. So we'll reverse the process on that and uh, then we're going to go ahead and drain that transmission fluid. Okay, before you take anything loose on this transmission pan, take yourself a blowgun, go all around the outside, get all the dirt off around where that pan is at. We don't want that dirt to fall inside. And the same around this spin-on filter over here on the front of the pan. Just to make sure that none of that dirt gets in there, none of that dirt load. And right here is your drain, your drain plug. Go ahead and buzz that off, get it draining. Okay, we got this transmission pan out. This transmission has about 165 to 170,000 miles on it. And that external spin on filter that they have does help a lot with the dirt load that's in the pan. We still have the magnet here, which we'll clean up. We'll get all that junk off of there. We'll clean the pan all up. There'll be a new gasket go in and a new filter, internal filter go in. And uh, we'll get back with you on that. Okay, I've cleaned this out in a solvent tank and I sprayed the outside. I hit it with uh, pressure washer it had a lot of junk on the outside but the inside I usually hit with either ether or brake clean parts cleaner and I'll just spray it down inside get all that junk out that I can if you're gonna use the ether make sure you don't have any sparks around or else you're gonna have a fire real fast and blow it out what I do with that magnet is I'll blow around it because it's glued down hit it again just get all that load off when you can. Just keep hitting it until it comes clean. Get that inside nice and clean, then we can go back together with it. Okay, the new transmission filter has a new seal on it for the neck right here. When you pull the old filter down, most of the time that, that seal is going to stay up here in this housing. And on this one it did. When you go to pull it out, I'm using this O-ring pick. It's got a hook on it. Okay, you got to be careful with it that you don't gouge the aluminum where that seal goes. You want to get a hold of it. And if you get a hold of one side of it, make sure that you aren't getting a hold of the aluminum. You can pop it right out without even touching the aluminum. Okay, once that's out of the way, then we can go ahead and pop that new filter out. Okay, filters in. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean around the outside where that gasket goes, and we're gonna go ahead and put up the, uh, the new, the new uh, transmission pan gasket and put the pan back up. We still have to change the spin-on filter yet too. We're gonna do that. Okay, the transmission uh, pan bolts get 20 foot-pounds of torque. The transmission drain plug is 26 foot-pounds of torque.
Okay, we've got everything buttoned up underneath. We've got the filter up, the pan up, the new spin-on filter on, and we've got the cooler lines coming from the line and the one from the cooler into a pan, okay? And before we start it up, we're adding two and a half gallon of the transmission fluid, the synthetic automatic transmission fluid. And we're gonna start it up and we're gonna look for a color change. We see a good color change, we'll stop. Good. Okay. Now as we're doing this flush, we're going through the gears a little bit too. Just to make sure we get some of that new fluid out for the clutch back as well. The dirtier the fluid is, okay, shut it off, man, we're running out, we're good. Okay. Turn it into a nice cherry red color there. The dirtier the fluid is, the more it takes to afford it to come clean. We're getting a nice cherry red there. Initially when we started it was darker. So I'm pretty happy with that. What we'll do now is we'll uh, hook up our cooler lines, put those back on, and then we'll uh, top off the transmission, start it up, and recheck the fluid level. But yeah, we're getting a good, nice cherry red color out of it there. So I'm pretty happy we've got a good majority of that old fluid out, torque converter and all that. So, all right. We've got the spin-on filter off from that Allison transmission. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it apart. We're going to remove the element, and then I'm going to cut out a piece of that element, squeeze it in the vise to get the oil out, and then you can fold that paper open and you can see what's in it. Now I've done this on hydraulic filters, I've done it on engine filters. Any place where you want to see what's going on inside that unit, whether it be the hydraulic system, whether it be the engine oil, whatever it may be, that filter has whatever dirt is in there or whatever metal is going through that system is going to be caught in that filter media. So this is a good way to check and see. If you got a vehicle you want to buy, you can always take along an extra filter, switch it, cut it, squeeze out and see what's in it, see what kind of shape the bearings are in and all that. If there's a lot of metal in it, leave the car be. Don't want it. So I'm going to cut this apart and show you. What I'm using is a cat. This is a Caterpillar uh, tool. It's a Ford Charlie 5084. And uh, this one will go to the big filters. It'll adjust way out, the smallest to the biggest. And also has a spacer under here depending on the depth of where your uh, roll crimp is at. So you can take this and, and adjust the cutter head where you want it, up or down, high or low. So this is kind of an expensive one, but it works very well, does all the filters. I've got the filter cut apart and this one here actually looks pretty nice. You can see both sides of the filter, the clean side and the dirty side. If you got a lot of metal in it, a lot of dirt, it kind of tells you what's going on inside that piece of equipment. So that kind of gives you a heads up on what's going on inside. Okay, that's uh, the end of this transmission flush. I used about four gallons, just a little over four gallons to do this transmission flush. That gives you some idea how much fluid you're going to need. Uh, thank you for watching the video, and uh, be sure to check out my other videos on YouTube as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. Please check out my other videos on my YouTube page. And I want to introduce you to Amsoil's full line of synthetic lubricants. Uh, we have the most complete line of synthetics for your automotive and light truck needs, uh, as well as heavy equipment and semis. Full line of synthetics has been around since 1972. And you can check those out at www.donsoil.com. Also, we have a page for looking up fluid capacities, and that one is fluidcapacity.com. And you can go in there and you can get all your fluid capacities of your vehicle. You can print off a list so that you've got all the capacities of your cooling system, your transmission, your engine, all those. And have a great day.